Hi, I'm Michael Gashi, product owner for Adobe Prelude, introduced in CS6. Today I'd like to take you on a quick tour of Prelude's ingest and logging workflows. So let's take a look. Here we have Adobe Prelude, and there's no media currently in the project itself. In order to get media into the project, all you need to do is click on the ingest button. The ingest dialog appears, and you'll see that the thumbnails start appearing for the media in the selected folder. If you had a camera connected or a memory card, that would show up here on the left-hand side as we show any mountable drives that the system can see. So I've selected a folder, and here's some media. And what I want to do is select this media and bring it into my project. I can choose it uh, one by one by simply clicking on the checkbox at the bottom of each of the thumbnails. I can also preview my footage by simply skimming my mouse left to right over the video itself. And if I want to play back the video and have audio with it, I simply click on it. You'll see it becomes what we call player active. By there's a, a scrubber here and actually a play bar at the bottom. And I hit the space bar and it'll actually play back with audio. If I want to select all the video at once and bring it in, I'll just click on the check all button and then I'll click on the ingest button over here. You can see all the media appears now in the project panel. So now that I have my videos inside my project panel, I'm ready to start logging it. To log a video, all you do is select it and then double click and it opens it up in the timeline. Now for Prelude, logging means adding temporal metadata or markers. On the left hand side, we've got our marker type panel that lists the six different marker types that ship with Adobe Prelude. For these demos, we'll talk about number one and number two, which are subclips and comment markers. To add a comment marker, I'm going to grab the player and I'm going to start moving it along. I'm going to find an interesting point that I want to start my comment marker. And I actually want to catch right when this guy enters the frame. So I'll set the player right to that point. I'll click on the comment button and you'll see that the comment marker appears. Also, right under the timeline, we get our heads up display asking me for the description of the comment. You can freely enter any text you want. This is a comment marker. Hit enter to commit that text. You can see that the text on the marker updates what we just added as well. And now I want to set the out point of my marker. I've set the end point just fine. I'm going to grab the player. I'm going to go ahead and move it downstream a little bit to a point where I want to go ahead and complete my marker and hit the O key to set that marker end point. You can see I have this marker now defined with an in and an out over the video. If you need to adjust, you can grab any of the handles, either the end point or the out point, and drag and correct it as needed. So now we've added a comment marker using the mouse. And that works just fine, but it's not a very fast workflow. We spent a lot of time in Prelude to try to develop a really easy and simple to use keyboard driven workflow for adding markers, which I'll demonstrate now. So without touching the mouse, I'm going to add several subclip markers and comment markers all in a row. To start playback, I'm going to hit the space bar. Now I'm going to add a subclip marker. I'm going to hit the number one key. And now the HUD, the or heads up display, is asking me for a name. I'll call this take one. I'll hit the tab key. The heads up display now asks me for a description. This is the first take. I want to hit enter to commit. Hit the O key to set my out point and hit the space bar to pause. So you can see I've added a subclip marker called take one. It's that blue bar now in the timeline. Let's add another subclip marker. Hit the space bar to continue. Hit the one key, call it take two, tab. This is another. I'll hit enter, hit the out key, space bar. So you can see really quickly I've added two subclip markers into my timeline. Now the clip itself has not been saved yet. We've added this metadata, but we haven't saved it. To save it, hit Control S. When I save the clip, you'll notice that we have two items appear up here in the project panel, take one and take two. That's exactly what we just called our two subclips. And indeed, these are subclip markers that are referenced now in the project panel. These aren't actual clips, they're just references into the master clip themselves, but it's a way for you to organize your media and uh, select your takes appropriately. So now that we've organized our media in our project panel, we'd like to show you some of the more advanced features of our ingest dialog. One feature in particular is called partial ingest. So we open up our ingest dialog by clicking on the ingest button, and here comes our media. So there's a clip here that at the very beginning uh, is, is pretty boring. There's a camera that's sitting at the end of the ramp waiting for the car to appear. We don't really want to show an empty ramp. That's not very interesting. So what we want to do is we want to trim this clip and ask Prelude to just give us the subset of the interesting part. To do that, I'll grab the playhead here and I'll scrub until the point where I can actually see the car come over the ramp. 
There it is, right there. So I'm going to set, hit my I key and set my endpoint at that point. I'm going to scrub a little farther, and I want to go until the car finishes its little spin out here at the end, and then I'll hit my O key for the out point. So you can see the orange bar here represents the in and out range of this clip that I want to bring in. So to tell Prelude to just give me this part of the video, I need to come over to our transfer options. I'll click on the transfer clips to destination checkbox. I'll leave the primary destination as my demo one folder. And now I want to enable the transcode option. By clicking on transcode, these two drop downs become enabled. The top one is for the formats. These are all the same formats that Adobe Media Encoder supports. For this example, we're going to go and select MXF OP1A. And then here in the drop down for the presets, I'm going to scroll down and pick a really nice, uh, let's see, XDCAM 50 720p. All we need to do now is select the clip and click the ingest button. When I bring up Adobe Media Encoder, you'll see that it's got the request and it's processing the file for us right now. It just finished. And here inside Prelude, we've got our new clip. So to double click this clip, let's go and preview and see if we've actually captured the interesting part of the video. I'll hit play. And you can see the video starts right when the car jumps over the ramp. And it should end right after the spin out. There we go. And that's our partially ingested clip. Okay, now I'd like to show you a few other options that are available to you inside our ingest dialog. So let's open the ingest dialog again, clicking the ingest button at the top. And I want to go and walk back to my original media. So here we've got the thumbnails appear for the media that's in this folder. And we can make the thumbnails larger so you can see them better by simply grabbing the slider and moving it over here. By selecting the clip and hitting the space bar, you can actually play the video back and it comes with audio. And it has full JKL support as well. So now I'm hitting the J key and I'm moving backwards. And you can obviously increase the speed. Hit K to pause, L to move forward. So it gives you the nice ability to kind of do a preview before you ingest any of your media. Let's go ahead and move this back down a little bit so we can see more thumbnails at a time. And this time what we want to do is actually ingest all this media, but we want to copy it. Imagine that we've got our camera connected or our memory card insert into the computer and we want to get all that media off. So I'm going to go and select these first three clips because I want to bring those in. And on the right hand side I'll go to the transfer options and I want to click on transfer clips to destination. This is telling Prelude to make sure that we do the copy. You can choose your primary destination. We'll go ahead and keep our demo one folder but you can choose any location you wish. And it's going to create a, a, a subfolder for us automatically that is date time stamped just so we can help organize ourselves automatically. Down here at the bottom, we have a verify option. So there's two ways you can verify media during a transfer in Prelude. The first one is by file size. This is a pretty fast check. It just goes ahead and makes sure that anything that we've copied matches the exact same file size as your original source does. The other one is by file content. This is more of a binary CRC check. It takes a bit longer, but if you really want to make sure that you've got your media onto your destination in the exact same details and format that's on your source, you definitely want to select file content. We'll disable that for now for the purposes of the demo. You can also add additional backup destinations. Click the Add Destination button. It'll let you select a new location. We'll do a new folder called Backup1 and say OK. What we have here is now a destination 01. It's going to point to our backup. And you can see that you also have the transcode option available here. So if you have a proxy workflow where you want to copy your raw uh, as part of your primary destination, your raw video, but you'd like to go ahead and, and generate some proxies, you can come here, select an H.264 or any other format you wish, and the video size, and away you go. So if I were to click the ingest button now, not only will we get a copy of all of our raw footage into our demo one, it's also going to send these three clips into Adobe Media Encoder, and it's going to transcode them into the selected format. I'll go ahead and do that now. You can see on the bottom left here inside Prelude, you can see the progress happening. We've got the three raw clips now coming over. And if we switch over to Adobe Media Encoder, you can see it's actually churning away on the request there as well. So there you have it. That's Adobe Prelude CS6 ingest and logging workflows. Adobe Prelude is available in the production premium and master collection suites. Thank you for your time.